Alrighty guys, so I bought myself a ZD30 Patrol behind me with a busted clutch. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys what you need to do to change the clutch. So that's dropping our enormous gearbox. These things are really heavy. It was an absolute dog to get out. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how to put a new clutch, new flywheel, um, new gear stick insert thing. So these are a little plastic bush that go in the top. I'm gonna to show you guys how to change that because that's what gives you gear stick side to side and up and down slop. Um, and I'm also going to show you guys how to do the rear main seal because it's really worth doing while you've got the gearbox out. So we're going to do all that in this video um, and we'll get straight into it. So we want to park it up somewhere where we've got plenty of room to work on it and then chock the wheels. So I've got a chock in front and a small one behind the tyre and then another one at the back end. That's important because these cars have the handbrake on the back of the transmission, not on the axle. And then when we park it up, you want to pull the handbrake off, make sure it's not going to roll anywhere and take it out of gear. And then you're going to get ready to crawl underneath it. So I'm under the patrol. We've already got our two drive shafts out. So I use two spanners to crack the nuts. Um, I don't want to tell you guys too much about this because if you can do a clutch, you should be able to take the drive shafts out. Um, and on the back of the handbrake, I used a long breaker bar, um, so I didn't really use a ratchet on any of this. Um, before we get into taking the gearbox down, we want to disconnect our handbrake line, any cables on top and any breathers that go to the gearbox. Um, and then we've got our cross member here. Remember to disconnect your slave cylinder. And these bolts along here are all 14, apart from when you start getting up to the top. I think there are 17. Um, and I think we'll have to reach down from the top to get the bolts on top of the bell housing. Um, so I'm going to start with the gearbox handbrake and then we're gonna move our way forward. All right, so handbrake cable comes from the handbrake all the way around here. It's got a little bit of a, a tie up here where it's attached to a bracket and then it comes into the actual handbrake arm here. So I think we wanna disconnect it from here and then trace it back to this bracket here and then this can come down with the gearbox. So now our handbrake cable's free. We're right to drop our gearbox without pulling this out. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is chase my loom. So there's wiring going along the top of the gearbox or the side. We're gonna chase those plugs and disconnect them so that we can drop the gearbox without ripping them out. So the next thing we want to do is take off our four-wheel drive selector and our gear stick. We can do this one from down here. We can do the selector from the top. And then we also want to take off our starter motor, which is just up there. So there's a bolt on the bottom and a bolt on the top. I think it would be best to get the bolt on top first so we can take it off from the bottom and stop it from dropping. And then we can do our gear stick while we're up there. So I'm gonna bring this down and we're gonna go attack some things from the top. Okay, so inside the cab, we want to unscrew our gear stick knobs. That's one and two. And once that's done, we wanna take out our boot. So you wanna press down on the boot like that. And then you want to pull it back from the edges, up and out. It's got a little wire support in there. And now we want to remove our trim that goes around the gear sticks so that we can undo the little metal press plate. Okay, so we've got one of these Phillips head screws on either side. So we wanna take those out. And we want to open up this little ashtray, wiggle it out, and then our last screw is right there. And now we want to pop this up and it's got a plug here that goes to the ashtray light. There we go. So now we just peel this up. It's got a nice crusty seal around it. Pull these boots over our stick, which is quite difficult. Thank you. 
So these also have a boot on the underside that this one's kind of damaged on, which is all right. It's an old seal anyway. Um, but that's a little panel. That one's really damaged. All right. So here is the top of our gearbox. You can see this boot is also torn, which isn't fantastic, but it'll do. So we're gonna clip this boot off. Remove that zip tie. We'll take the top one off anyway, because it's not doing anything. And we've got this little rubber piece here. Pull up this rubber seal here, you'll be able to see there's this circlip here. This is a very loose gear stick too, so this here is a plastic bush um, and I can show you guys how to replace that as well. So that's what gives you your gear stick wobble. So this is in neutral, if we go to say fourth, we've still got a lot of wobble in it. So we've got our circlip pliers. We're going to grab our circlip here, squeeze and up, and then let them go. And our gear stick will wiggle up. I don't know what I just dropped down there. Oh, was that? Oh, that's the end of the plastic thing. So I just pulled this out. This is the lower bush that goes into the selector. Um, and that one is also blown. So I'm going to replace this and the bush that goes along with it. Um, so this is your upper bush here. It's spring loaded, stays in the housing here, um, unless you flick out this top circlip here. Um, I had a bit of a think about it and I don't think we need to take off this four wheel drive selector because it's so short, um, I don't think it's gonna interfere with anything. So we should be able to drop the gearbox without taking this off. All right, so now we're gonna undo the starter motor. It's a little bit tricky, so you guys won't be able to see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna reach in here and get onto the top bolt on the starter motor. So I ended up having to crack the nut from the top using a spanner and then come down underneath and get it with a quarter inch drive ratchet because it's a very tight squeeze. I'm using a wobbly drive and an extension. Got it. That's what we wanted. That's our starter motor bolt. There we go. So there's a bit of crud in there. So I'm going to say that the rear main is also gone. So we're just gonna grab the little hose clip, open it up, pull it down. And then I usually grab them up the top, give them a little wiggle wiggle as I pull down. Hopefully that stops you tearing it. Okay, so we've disconnected everything. The only thing we have left to do is take that cross member down and the last two bolts at the top of the bell housing. So I'm gonna put the transmission jack underneath it. We're gonna undo that cross member, flex it down, get to the top bolts, and then we're gonna pull it all down. Okay guys, so we've got the transmission jack under there. Um, I know not everyone has a hoist and a transmission jack like this, but you can do the same thing with a floor jack and control the rear end of the gearbox to get to the back of the bell housing. Alright, so we've got our cross member out. It is down now. It's a little bit stuck on an old bolt there that I snapped off. I snapped one bolt on the passenger side and three bolts on the driver's side, um, which I will need to extract at some point. Um, but right now I'm gonna focus on getting the gearbox out because that's what's most important to me at the moment. I'm gonna change the rear main seal while I'm in there. So I can show you guys how to do that because it's worth doing while you've got the gearbox and flywheel off. Um, so we're going to slowly lower this gearbox down and get to those last two bolts on the bell housing. I'm gonna pull it back.
that was really difficult. Um, in hindsight, take off the four wheel drive gear stick. Um, it did end up getting in the way. We rolled it. If you're looking from the back of the car to the front of the car, underneath it, we rolled it anti-clockwise and that four wheel drive lever hits the cutout in the floor. So we rolled it anti-clockwise to get this triangle here. This hits the foot well. So we wanted to roll it up and then pull it back. And it worked once we could finally roll it up. We took off the cross member, or well, the cross member fell off because both the mounts, the rubber mounts were both torn. So the cross member just fell off. I thought it was on there, which is kind of scary because I had this all tied on to the cross member. So it could have fallen off. So make sure that your cross member mounts aren't torn. I'd take off the cross member. Um, if you're using a trolley like this, tie onto the whole gearbox without the cross member. Find your center point, which this is actually really nicely centered. The gearbox is just shifted to one side, so it's kind of tilting. Um, so yeah, right where your cross member sits, I think tie on around there. You can see that's where the, the mounts are torn off. Um, but yeah. This is the gearbox out. It was an absolute dog to get out. Um, and now I've got to clean it up and have a look at what's wrong with the engine too. Alrighty guys, so that's all we've got for this episode. We've got our gearbox out, we've got our clutch assembly ready to start working on. Um, I've got to wait for some parts to turn up so that we can continue with that. Um, next episode, we'll be going through how to install the clutch and put our gearbox back in. So I'll see you guys when we get that out.